Welcome to Life Devotions. Thank you for joining me today. I waited patiently. <laughs> and it's a bit funny for me to hear myself say this because if there was anything that I struggled with when I was young, and I'm still young, you know, is waiting patiently. But isn't that just absolute wonderful? in our relationship with Jesus, that where we in our natural nature fall short, you know, He is able to perfect that which concerns us. That we partake of His divine nature, His character, His, His glory, His goodness. And one of the great attributes of our Savior is the patience, the waiting, it's one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. You see, patience is a beautiful fruit of the Holy Spirit that God works in our nature to wait patiently, to look to Him. It has to do with the trusting, relying, depending heart. It has to do with an inward disposition, an inward characterization of our nature that l learns how to be calm, how to rest, how to wait. Uh, I'll read you this little verse that, that I utterly love. Uh, I'll, I'll do two verses here. It's in Isaiah 30, verse 15, and verse 18 in the Amplified. For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning to me and resting in me, you shall be saved in quietness, and in trusting confidence shall be your strength in resting in me. You see, this, this has to do with reliance, dependence, submitting, yielding, surrendering, and that is an absolute characteristic of our Savior, Jesus Christ. I mean, when He said at the cross, in thine hands I commit my spirit, He thereby broke the final stranglehold that sin had on the nature of man, and that was not to trust and rely and depend on the Father, but to question His providence with our ignorance. And what a wonderful thing that Jesus broke that very evil out of the nature of man so that He can impart into us that very nature of reliance and dependence and yieldedness to the Father. So it is in resting in me you shall be saved. In quietness and in trusting confidence shall be your strength. And then verse 18. Therefore the Lord earnestly waits, expecting, looking, and longing to be gracious to you. You see, if there's anybody who's been waiting, it's been the Lord. He's been waiting to be good to you. So be encouraged. The Lord is hovering over you, not with judgment, but with mercy and with grace to bring you into the, the bosom of His intimate presence so that He may satisfy you with His goodness and that you may with tears of gratitude sing, all oh, mercy, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall be in the house of the Lord forever. So the Lord earnestly waits, expecting, looking, longing to be gracious to you and he lifts himself up so that he may have mercy on you and show you his loving kindness. For the Lord is a God of justice and blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied to all those who earnestly wait for him, who expect, look, and long for him, for his victory, his favor, his love, his peace, his joy, his matchless, unbroken companionship. Oh my goodness, when that is what you wait for, Father, you're more than enough for me. Thank you that you make me stable and steady under the shadow of the Almighty where you keep me stable and steady in your sufficiency, Father. I believe you're more than enough for me, Father, that this wanting, this needing, this hurting, this pain, this loneliness is gone because you are my refuge. You see, that waiting, is the characterization that the Heavenly Father longs to form in you as you're going through what you're going through right now. And, and you're saying, no, I want the answer. And God says, no, the answer is, wait upon me. 
You see, David says here in Psalm 40, verse 1, I waited patiently for the Lord, and He inclined to me. You see that? Inclined to me. Oh, I love that thought. It's like you're standing before the Lord, right? You have your pain, your want, your need, your loneliness. You have the hurts of your life, things you don't understand, unfair things, unjust things, difficult to bear. And you wait before the Lord, and He inclines His nature begins to manifest in you. He inclined to me and heard my cry and brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon the rock, established my steps and put a new song in my mouth, praise to our God, and many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust. Oh, what an incredible, beautiful psalm this is. And and while we may not always understand how valuable it is to wait upon the Lord, this is why we have the Scripture. <laughs> you see, Lamentations is written by the weeping prophet Jeremiah. And he says there in chapter 3, verse 21, This I recall to mind, and therefore I have hope. It is through the Lord's mercies we're not consumed, because His compassions fail not. They're new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in Him. The Lord is good to those who wait for Him, to the soul who seeks Him. Yes, it is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good. You see, this waiting is what is the forming and shaping of our inward man with the, with the nature and the character of our Father, our loving Heavenly Father. And that helps us begin to realize um, what it means to rely upon Him, depend upon Him, trust in Him, and, and be uh, like a baby who is nourished by the mother's breast. As, he, as the baby partakes of the milk that comes forth. And so we wait and then are nourished by the life of the Son of God, nourished by the life of the Spirit. David also says in Psalm 25, To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed. But let those be ashamed who deal treacherously without cause. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. On you I wait all the day. Remember, O Lord, your tender mercies and your loving kindness, for they are from of old. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore He teaches sinners in the way, and the humble He guides with justice, guides in justice. The humble He teaches His way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth. Who is the man who fears the Lord? He shall teach um, him, he shall teach in the way he chooses. He himself shall dwell in prosperity, and his descendants shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear Him. Oh, and He will show them His covenant. My eyes, my eyes are ever toward the Lord. I mean, I'm just picking out a couple of scriptures out of this incredible Psalm 25. You know, my dear wife, Virginia, she's such a really loving soul. My goodness, she's such a sweetheart. And, and we have gone through years when it seemed like all we could do is wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord. And I remember her saying, honey, all I know is to wait. All I know is to wait. But you see, that she did not say in some derogatory way, no, the opposite. My eyes are upon the Lord who made heaven and earth. That's like Abraham and Sarah waiting upon the Lord who was working in, his, in them by His Spirit to fulfill His promise. 
that those as good as dead from them were born as many as the stars of heaven according to the promise. You see, there is a maturing that comes during times when we are given the privilege to wait, to wait upon the Lord, to hope in Him continuously, and to say to the Lord, Lord, I have no one in heaven but you, and there's no one on earth I desire but you. And let me just read you a few more verses here, just one more, just one more. I mean, you know this, this is such good, good scripture. Thank God for the scriptures, hey? Psalm 37, verse 3, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on His faithfulness. What do I, what should I do, Pastor, when I'm waiting? Keep trusting in the Lord and do good. Keep doing what's right in His sight and feed on His faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord and He shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in Him and He shall bring it to pass and bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for Him. Verse 7, rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for Him. <laughs> it reminds me, in 1979 I was in the Bible school and I came back from the Bible school and my father said to me, he said, son, I need to pop by the bank, but you can't park there, but you're allowed to stand in front, but you're not allowed to park. So if you drive me, then you could stand there and I won't be long, I won't be long, maybe half an hour or so. I said, no problem, Dad. So we drove up to the bank. I stood there and he said to me, now keep the engine running, I'll be out shortly. So he went into the bank and I waited there and then he came back into the car. Four hours later, four hours later, and he looked at me and he said, the engine is still running? I said, Dad, you told me to wait, aren't you here? And that little experience stuck with me as if the Lord gave me an object lesson to live in readiness for when He comes. And Jesus taught us to wait for the return of the Lord, to wait for the coming of the power of the Holy Spirit, to wait. He so often showed us that if we would patiently wait that He would come. And He comes for those, the Bible says in Hebrews, what is it, chapter 9, verse, 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 verse 6 or 6, verse 9 or so, it says there that He will come again for those who eagerly look for His appearing. Or in other words, those who wait for Him. Let's live in that waiting grace, expecting grace, depending grace, relying grace, hoping grace, looking grace. And that when the Father looks at us, we could say, Father, I'm here waiting. I know you're faithful to fulfill your promise in my life. I'm yours, Lord. I'm yours. Amen? Have a good day.